it has been all year. I've been looking at this whole junction all year because I think it's the bigger trade is I think the Fed are not going to deliver what they say. Every, I looked at every recession going back to 1963 and almost every single time there is a growth scare early on because the economy is not fully stabilized yet. Mm. So what happens is stimulus comes out of the economy, fiscal stimulus. The Fed start talking about tightening because because uh, inflation's risen, because the year-on-year rate of change and stuff like that. This time we've got supply issues. And then what happens is the Fed think about raising, and before you know it, growth evaporates again. And then the Fed actually end up cutting. So I think we will get a couple of rate rises in, potentially, maybe only one. Um, that's my view. Why? Well, because I think by June, I think inflation is back down to 3%, and, and the ISM is probably closer to 52 than it is to 60 so you don't want to tighten into a falling economy going into a election. I know the narrative now is, well, they need to tighten to look like they're fighting inflation. Best thing to do is talk tough, get a rate hike in, maybe two, two 25 basis points in, then let the, la- the natural kind of ebbing and flowing of the economy work in your favor. You can say we've beaten inflation um, and then you can get a stimulus package through. Yeah, take a take a victory lap uh, that we then, jawboned it before we had to actually do, and then stimulate ahead of the election. I mean, that would be that would be perfect for them. So, th- th- and the reason I dropped m- my jaw dropped. Obviously, we've all seen the headlines, right? You have so many the market pricing in f- at least four, not only interest rate so, hikes, but lots so of here, talk about quantitative tightening. This is so aggressive. Here, yeah. So here's the fact: is I saw it yesterday, and I've been following this for two decades now. Every single year of my entire career, every single investment bank has predicted rates too high. Without question. A hundred percent forecast error. (laughs) And they do it all the time because they seem to ignore the fact that we're in a secular downtrend driven by demographics with a massive credit, um, credit bubble. So you can't raise rates. I mean, you can't generate inflation and you can't raise rates. But they ignore it every time. And every time, I remember last time we hit the chart of truth line, which was back in 2018. The last time I was starting to comment about, I think this dynamic's changing. Jeff Gunlack's like, it's breaking the chart of truth. It's going to 6%. The, you know, the world's going to fall apart. I've heard this every three years of my career, and it never happens. Now, is this time different? There's always a probability, mm. but it's not the highest probability to me. So Robert, uh, who put a question to the RV site, that answered his question. Are they going to raise rate four times? Is this even possible without creating the, uh, cratering the economy? Raul just answered that. We, we do have. So what does this mean for risk assets? We do have people asking about what about this, you know, sell off we've seen in tech. Given that outlook uh, that you don't expect that action from the Fed, does this does this sort of so, give you any indication of so how what risk makes assets long will? duration assets? less attractive is not increasing bond yields. It's the inflation that we've had. So you discount it by the inflation. So if the market is wrong in expecting higher inflation for longer, then growth stocks will explode higher again. Because really, let's face it, we live in an exponential age. Anybody who thinks that tech stocks, high growth, long duration tech stocks that are capturing exponential rise of technology are not going to go up again. That can't happen just because of network effects of what's going on. We're not talking about IBM here or GE stock or some of these things can trade sideways for decades, but you can't trade sideways for decades when you've got exponential growth going on. It just just can't happen. Now, you can have periods of a year, 18 months of sideways down markets, which we've been seeing, but then what happens is they end up looking ludicrously cheap. Um, versus what's happening. And the moment the inflation story disappears, then everyone 